What we're talking about next in section P3 is how to rationalize the denominator. Uh, now there are two different things that we're going to look at. They're going to look at is if your denominator is a monomial, which means one term, or if the denominator is a binomial. So we'll look at both cases, but first of all we'll look at this one. Uh, rationalize the denominator. The reason that uh, this is one of the things we need to do is right now we, we do not want a radical in our denominator. So what we're going to try to do is try to get the radical out of our denominator. Uh, so to do that, we're going to try to rationalize our denominator, but remember the end goal because that's going to help us out tremendously. Uh, a lot of teachers, I think, uh, what they'll do, whoops, that's not an equal sign, we'll put a times. A lot of teachers, what they'll tell you uh, when you have something like this is just to go ahead and multiply the denominator by whatever it is. So if you have the square root of 3, multiply it by the square root of 3. Now that will definitely work. Uh, for square roots, but it will not always work for cube roots or any uh, root higher than, of course, 2. And uh, it may not always be the easiest thing either, so it's important for us to figure out where we want to go. On a problem like this, what I would do is I would say, right now I have the square root of 3. And what I would do is I would look and say, can I think of a multiple of 3 that's a perfect square? And I can. Uh, the square root of 9. So 9 is a multiple of 3. So what I would do is figure out, what do I have to multiply this by? to get this, and that right now is the square root of 3. Since I don't want to change the value of the fraction, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the exact same thing. So 1 times the square root of 3 will be the square root of 3. Now as you can see, the reason we did this is we wanted to get something in our denominator that would simplify. So the square root of 9 is 3 over the square root of 3. Now if we could, we would need to try to simplify this fraction. To simplify this fraction, you would look at the denominator and also the coefficient. You cannot divide this 3 by this 3 because this is not really 3, it's the square root of that number, which is an irrational number, 1 point whatever, 7 something something something. So this cannot be simplified, so that would be our answer in a problem like this. We'll look at another example and I'll show you uh, why I talked about what we talked about a second ago which is this one right here, 3 over the square root of 8. Now normally what you guys might have learned in the past, just go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 8. But I think that's going to cause you a little bit more work. So what I would do in a problem like this, the square root of 8, is figure out what's a multiple of 8 that's a perfect square. And that answer of course is 16. 16 is a perfect square and it's a multiple of 8. So all I have to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. When you multiply the top by the square root of 2, you'll get 3 square root of 2. And then, of course, our denominator, square root of 8 times the square root of 2. Anytime you have the same index, you just multiply your radicands together. And that, of course, is our uh, product rule. So when you multiply those together, you get the square root of 16, and we can simplify that. So we'll get the square root uh, 3 times the square root of 2 over uh, the square root of 16 being 4. Now again, if we could simplify it, what we would do is we would divide both these numbers by the same thing to simplify our fraction, but as you can see in this one, we can't simplify it, so that would be our answer.